After 16 long days at sea, we pulled into paradise. We huddled with the boys and talked about what we had accomplished and decided how we should celebrate once we arrived. We are now in the middle of the Pacific Ocean in one of the most remote places on Earth. Where are we going, everybody? To land! Pretty crazy land! I could you do? about three more days. You me too, oh. Reese. Hey, are you gonna kiss the ground? No, totally not. We made it, we are on land in Hiva Oa, Marquesas. We hiked into town to check in with a gendarme. We looked for some lice medicine to no avail. And believe it or not, we left right away for an even more beautiful anchorage than this. Seems crazy to leave paradise, but we're going somewhere even more amazing. We are now leaving Hiva Oa and uh, headed over to Fatahiva. It's a six hours sail, unfortunately a little upwind. Just to keep things interesting, we've got Wapiti, a Norwegian Lagoon 380, which was our last boat right here with us. They did amazing crossing the Pacific. They averaged 180 miles a day. We could never get over 160 in our lagoon. They had a huge code zero sail that we didn't have and it's just crushing it on that little boat. So let's we'll see how a lagoon 380 and a Outremer do upwind. Kind of know what's gonna happen, but kind of cool to see our old boat. So long, Hiva Oa. What a beautiful landfall. Fatu Hiva is one of the most beautiful anchorages in the world. With no airport, this island is only accessible by boat, so it remains relatively untouched by tourism. In fact, it hasn't changed at all since we last visited over a decade before. Okay, so crashed my drone on the way to the Galapagos and a super friendly cruiser named Amir, who I didn't know, who I met on Facebook through the cruising network, offered to buy me a new drone in Panama and bring it to the Galapagos. How cool is that? So he brought me the new Mavic 2. Uh, I've been holding it throughout the passage because I haven't been able to fly it. And I wanted to get to land. And so now I'm on land, never flying from the boat again. And this is the first flight of the Mavic 2. Diving on the anchor, and I got stung by a jellyfish so bad. It's these evil little things. Look at this. Look at these. They're all over. Look at that thing. I've been stung by other jellyfish, but that thing, whatever that is, oh, it's not more than five, six inches, but you do not want to be stung by that. Yeah, I just got one. Look at this thing. Here, touch it, see what happens. No! <laughs> That's what stung me. God, it hurt. That little thing. Whew. Well, here we are in paradise, yeah. but it's not quite the paradise we should be enjoying at the moment. Seth, what are you doing here? Well, I mean, you're just... The tropics sounds so amazing, but it's so humid, you get so much mold. So we're just cleaning, taking everything out of the hull, scrubbing it by hand to get all the mold away. Just gotta keep it dry and clean. And this is after like a great week, or have we had our second bout of salmonella poisoning? <laughs> well, we've been sick, and so it's time to get the boat clean. Four hours in the making. But all of the mold and all of the water is out of the bilge. That hatch leaking didn't help. We've had toilet issues. And now the bilge is spotless, clean, dry. Look how clean that is. The whole thing's like that. 
that clean. That is clean and dry. And organize, organization wise, we've got plumbing equipment by the toilet, engine oil, uh, parts for the engine. We've got cleaners right there. Here we have alcohol and juice and beer. Uh, we've got some filters by the pumps. This is the cereal and bars, chips and crackers, milk and drinks, and Ziplocs, and then sort of just condiments. So that is our, our new Seth improved storage system. Love my wife, but not always the most organized individual. Give her a lot of credit though, she's doing this with me. sweet town of Fatuhiva. There's no garbage anywhere. Everything's manicured, flowers. It's their little outdoor church with no windows. Okay, this, this is cool. You you just taught me something. What happens when you touch them? They uh, hold up. They turn. When you touch it, it's just, it like closes up. This is like a gas. Look at this one here. I've never seen that. Do this one ready. Okay, scale of one to ten. How's this hike so far? <laughs> ten. Reese, how much fun are you having? Zero. Zero. We had some complaining children, but now it's about to rain. Minus one thousand. Look at the rain. A minus one thousand. Sheeting down. Really on bad. Taking refuge under a tree with lots of holes in it. <laughs> and. And how's the hike? Minus 1,000. It's disappointing. We think, I think we're in the right way. Like the river's right I there. I don't think we're going the right way. I the river's right there, but... We have turned around. Because now it's getting nice and blue and sunny. And uh, we're giving up for today. We're not, we're gonna find, figure out where we went wrong. So Elizabeth's a little worried about walking under this after a rain. A little bit of high wind. Lots of little boulders exposed. At some point they gotta fall. Yesterday we got ruined. I'm drawing a line in the sand. Men or mice, what are you? Mouse? Are we gonna do this hike today, guys? Yeah. Who's gonna win today? The hike or the Heinz family? Hike. Heinz family. Hike. Hike. Alright. Are you a man? It's Mother's Day. You can't be a man. <laughs> I just made the line. I'm actually no. part of this. Okay, our directions were. What were the directions? Turn left at the bowl. Turn left at the bowl. So I think we're here. We're a little bit different than the directions you get at home. You don't turn left on I-95, you turn left at the bowl. Lots of little Karens marking the way. Is it small? No, it's small. Look. Wow. This is what cruising with children is like. It's a little different than last time where we, we would swim peacefully in the lagoon. 
We're a little bummed. Last time we were here, we were able to swim in the lagoon and it doesn't look very appetizing today. The hike was great. The swimming hole was a disaster, but the, even the waterfall itself is still beautiful. It's just an incredibly beautiful place. All right, we're about to go now. So we are on a three night passage to the Tuamotu. Three nights. Here we go, here we go. What a playground. Hot that to Eva. Most beautiful anchorage in the world, I believe. Both times I've been so sad to leave this place. Heading west. This is the uh, first morning of our passage to the two mountains. Crazy, kind of came out of nowhere. Saw 30 knots, 30 knots of wind right there. Dumping, dumping rain and no wind. Just look at the shift in wind angle. I was sailing along fine. Major squall hits. I actually get to go even more favorable. Then it passes and the wind just dies. So now I'm going basically due south. Come on, wind, come back. Just like that, sun comes up, wind returns. I'm starting to head where I want to go, if I can go even further. Let's turn us down 20 degrees. And we're back on course. Going uh, 10 knots over ground in 20 true. And it's time for my 6 a.m. position alarm. Every six hours I record our spot so I can see how many miles we did that day. Uh, the winds have died. We found down about 10 knots. We've got a huge squall coming at us from behind, so I think we're going to bring down the spinnaker just in case and uh, maybe jib motor sail until it passes. So that's what we're up to. It's about 12 miles out still, but it's going to come straight at us. So we won't want to have this guy up. Just a little precautionary, but. Right thing to do. So we're pretty lucky that squall went right off our starboard side. It kind of went right by us. So we're just dodging bullets here. scared in my life. Uh, right now we are caught off guard by a squall and our spinnaker won't come down. The sock will not move off the top. We've seen 37 knots of wind uh, and we've been going 17 sustained. Kind of been running around. We've tried to bring it down. Uh, things are calming down a little bit now but they're still pretty crazy. So here's, here's the true wind. We got 29 Oh, 30 knots. Uh, boat speed is uh, 13 sustained right now. The fear right now is that um, we lose our rig or that, um, you know, if we get pulled sideways and the spinnaker pulls that set the boat over sideways, then we can tip it over. Running full engines. Full, full speed forward to try and take as much load off the sail as possible. But thankfully the boat seems to be taking it like a champ. This is not not a good situation to be in. We cannot bring down the spinnaker unless we cut it away. And I'm worried about doing that as well. So right now we're just kind of riding the storm. It's crazy. Can you try and go look at the radar and see if it's going to dissipate at some point? 35, 36 knots, 14 knots over ground, sustained speed. God damn. 15 knots over ground, speed. 
17.6. That's a new record. 18.6 still. 18.7. 18.8. 18.8 knots over ground. Rick is taking it, but I don't, you know. I just want the wind to start to calm down. I don't get why it's still going so strong. I just don't know what to do. Like, I, I'm really at a loss here. I know, I know, I know. I just, I just don't get why I can't get it down. I mean, I'm gonna get up there and I can't bring it down. I'll get up there and I'll put it on the winch and try and winch it down, all right? It's gonna flog and make a lot of messy noise. Why don't we get our headphones? Do we get the headphones on? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Okay, so you're gonna ease that green sheet to bring the sail on this side, okay? We'll be okay. We're gonna be all right. The sail's gonna make a lot of noise. So it's gonna get ripped to shreds probably. And then when I tell you you're gonna let out the green. We did it. Sails down. We're alright. We're okay. We're alright. We're okay. Okay, we're down. So the winds are still 29, 30, gusting to 36. Wouldn't the sock wouldn't come down? I don't understand why. I guess it's just so loaded it just wouldn't even move an inch. I was able to put it on the winch, the mast, and start to get it to come down. Started luffing and shaking like crazy way ahead of the boat, but I was able to winch it down. Unfortunately, two thirds of the way down, the line got fouled on the winch. And with the load on it, I couldn't unfoul the line. So now we couldn't even sock the last third. And so it was just luffing around like crazy. Uh, I had Elizabeth come forward. We were able to grab the sheets and the guys and we were able to pull the sail in. So somehow, I have no idea how, we didn't rip the spinnaker. It's a lightweight spinnaker and it was flying in 36 knots of wind. And we didn't, we didn't lose the rig. It must have been a ton of stress on the top of the rig. I'll have to check the shrouds and uh, I'm glad we tightened the main sheet which acted like a backstay but it's down we're just under engine power we didn't even foul a prop and we're going a nice eight knots and the kids are freaking out but going to bed I need to go to bed all right that's enough for today I'm signing off You see that? No squalls coming at us. Oh, last night was sketchy. As you can see, we're flying it again. Actually, I'm amazed that we're dumb enough, brave enough, smart enough to, to try it again, but spinnaker is back up. It's not ripped, you can't believe it. Last night was so stressful. We were such dummies. We, we never fly a spinnaker at night, rule number one. Rule number two, if there's squall, squally weather around, you bring your spinnaker down. And we just got caught with our, our pants down and our spinnaker up. All of a sudden, 30 knots of wind, gusting to 37. The boat was going 15 sustained up to you know, 19. We saw 19 knots. And that wasn't even surfing down a wave. That was 19 knots for a good 10 or 15 seconds, just probably right in the trough of a wave, staying with it. But we were moving way too fast. I can't believe the autopilot kept up. I can't believe the boat was as stable of a platform as it was. It's just incredible, I'm very lucky, and that the rig uh, was so strong to hold that, that uh, tension, or I guess that the boat was light enough to keep that tension off. But uh, the things we did right, we had the engines on, we tightened our uh, main sheet, which basically acted as a backstay and, and pulled the mast back, try and take some of that stress off the, off the rigging. Um, we had our life jackets on, we were doing everything we could to try and bring it down. Things we did wrong, obviously just getting into the scenario should never happen, but uh, that, you know, then aside, we really probably weren't familiar enough with the sock mechanism when we could not figure out how to get it down. It would not come down. And I had to come forward and put it on this winch here. And then uh, when I was furling it, because it was loose on the out outside, it got fouled up on the winch. So we got two thirds of the way down, bringing the sock down on the sail, which collapses it. And so about two-thirds of it was still uh, lit, and this line was fouled, 
and because there's a load on it, I couldn't undo it. So all of a sudden the sail is basically, basically furled. We can't take it up, we can't take it down. Now we're really in trouble. Uh, and we were able, we were able somehow to, Elizabeth and I both with our weight, pull the sock down and get it down enough that we could then ease the halyard. One of us could pull on the sail, get it tucked away here, uh, out of the way, uh, out of the wind, and we're able to get the whole thing down. Oh, what a relief. In the dark, just as the rain is coming down. Such a relief. And now we're foolish enough to put it up again. But I'm glad it's up. Uh, we're going too slow. It's really light wind, 15 knots right now. I wanted to see if it would still uh, sail, if everything was still working right, and it is. So, uh, no rips, no tears. Probably the last time we ever used this sail. If you'd like to buy a symmetrical spinnaker for a catamaran, please let me know. So this is pretty crazy too. This is our track from last night. Right here at this change in course, you can see is when the uh, wind shift, winds hit us and the shift happened. It records a point every 20 minutes. You can see how tight these ones were and then how much spacing starts to come in here. This was a huge distance across. So we went from here to here in an hour and 20 minutes. And I just figured it out. We went 15 miles. So that's an average of 13 knots over this time period. So for an hour and 20 minutes, we averaged 13 knots. That's crazy fast. Okay, we're being smart today. On the radar, we've got uh, the squall coming. It's 12 miles away. Winds are still light, 12 knots. Now is when you reef, right? Not when it gets to be 38 degree, 38 knots out. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so here is a textbook takedown. Uh, first, Elizabeth eases that red sheet there. That's what, that's what helps us control the sheet port to starboard. Then she eases the green guy, which holds the sail down. Uh, once those two are slacked, as you'll see, the sail will start to luff. Now, the other night it was doing that very, very violently, and that sheet on the starboard side was whipping around ferociously. Right now it's nice and calm. I'm able to then pull down on the sock, which just goes right over the sail, collapsing it and it's super easy. It's just so much harder to do this in really heavy winds. Woo! We're pros at this. Join us next week in Rangaroa for my birthday. Hail out.